with regard to the nuclear issue in particular, I think that the way it's always been, if I can kind of piggyback or start there, it's always been uh, sort of presented to the American people as, uh, as something for the experts, right? That we really, as, as individuals, as American citizens, we really don't need to trouble ourselves with that. Um, and uh, there are so many acronyms and so many statistics and so much kind of jargon uh, surrounding nuclear weapons um, that's very hard to penetrate. Um, and, and so it, it, just sort of, it just sort of fades away. Um, and it is relegated to the shadows. Um, and, and as I was sitting watching the film and you know, seeing the, the, particularly the drawings from Hiroshima and Nagasaki, I had this like, oh, Madeline turned to me and she said, I'm gonna have nightmares tonight, mommy. And I thought, shoot, oh yeah, she sure is. And I spent my childhood having nightmares uh, um, about nuclear weapons. And, and that was in part because uh, the, some of that footage that was there, the black and white images that Lynn was uh, going through um, uh, of the, uh, the book that the Habakkusha gave to her were, you know, we projected those on the wall of our living room and watched them over and over again. It was part of our education uh, as very young children, as young as Seamus and Madeline here. And um, that's Seamus, a very shy boy. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and that is not the American education about nuclear weapons, uh, the education that I received, that my brother and sister received as, as small children. And, and I think at a, at a young age, we felt very responsible for nuclear weapons um, and responsible for their elimination. Um, and we were told that our mom and dad and all of our friends uh, went off to prison uh, because they were working so hard uh, to keep uh, those weapons from being used again, and um, and they say that that uh, that fear is sort of a you know sort of triggering fear of uh, an event is not a good way to sort of engage people. This is what sociologists think um, that uh, that uh, kind of making people feel afraid uh, kind of causes people to retract to a more conservative position, right? Um, that's what I uh, learned in college. But, uh, but my fear of nuclear weapons, um, and my fear uh, of their use, my fear of their manufacture, my fear of the, the way in which the uh, uranium was pulled out uh, of the land, um, you know, kind of made me an activist, made, my, made me sort of accommodate to the fact that my parents went off to jail. Um, and that their friends uh, did that too, um, and uh, and I think that, well, I don't want my children to have nightmares about nuclear weapons. I also don't want them to kind of get to college or, or get to young adulthood and 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 have this kind of weird like, did all the adults in my life just lie to me and tell me that everything was going to be fine, mm -hmm. right? Now, what what is what is this? What is this world that I am now responsible for? How could you do this to me? I uh, uh, can't countenance that. Um, and so, um, so I, you know, Steve Kelly's line there in the film about um, how we can't be fully human as long as these weapons continue to exist. Really. We don't need to know what the acronyms stand for, right? We don't need to know the difference between a, a one weapon and the other, or a land-based or sea-based, or the, you know, the, the kiloton yield of this one compared to that one, or a plutonium weapon versus a uranium weapon. We don't, we don't need to know any of that. It's handy sometimes, but, um, but what we need to know is that they have no right to exist, um, and that as long as they exist, we're we're kind of, we might look like full human beings, but we can't really be fully human. And we, we certainly can't be moral actors 